In the prior two lectures, we have explained and used the principle of mathematical induction. We started with the principle as if p sub k is some proposition we need to prove where k is natural, we first prove the basis step that p sub 1 is true, and then we prove the inductive step, assume that p sub k is true for some arbitrary k, and derive from here that p sub k plus 1 is also true. Therefore, p sub k is valid for all k natural. Then we realize that we need a more general principle that did not necessarily start it on 1. Therefore, we arrive to the generalized principle of mathematical induction. If we need to prove some proposition, p sub k, depending on k, for all k greater than or equal than a natural, we first prove the basis step that p sub a is true. Then we prove the inductive step, assume that p sub k is true for some arbitrary k natural, and then derive from here that p sub k plus 1 is also true. Then p sub k is valid for all k greater than or equal than a natural. Formulating the principle this way, we're allowed to solve those cases where a property may not be valid for all natural numbers. Still, this is not sufficiently strong to prove some mathematical propositions. There is a stronger version of the principle of mathematical induction. It's called the principle of a strong mathematical induction, and it's also known as the principle of complete mathematical induction. So, we formulate the principle of a strong mathematical induction as if we need to prove some proposition p sub k, depending on k, for all k greater than or equal than a natural, we first prove the basis step that p sub a is true, and then we prove the inductive step, that is, we assume that p sub a, p sub a plus 1, p sub a plus 2, up to p sub k are true, up to some arbitrary k natural. Then, we derive from here that p sub k plus 1 is also true. Then, p sub k is valid for all k greater than or equal to a natural. Notice that the difference between the generalized principle of mathematical induction and the principle of strong induction is that we not only ask for p sub k to be valid, but we ask for a stronger statement to be valid. That is, p sub a, p sub a plus 1, p sub a plus 2, up to p sub k are all valid. As an example of proposition that can be proved by the principle of strong induction we have, proof that any natural greater than 1 is prime or the product of primes. Let p sub n be the statement that n is either prime or the product of primes. Obviously, p sub 2 is true since 2 is prime. We assume now that p sub a, p sub a plus 1, p sub a plus 2, up to p sub k are all valid. Let us show that p sub k plus 1 is true. If k plus 1 is prime, then there is nothing else to prove so p sub k plus 1 is true. Now, let us handle the case where k plus 1 is not prime. Then k plus 1 is composite. That means can be represented as a product of two integers. Let them be x and y, such that k plus 1 equal x times y. But x is less than k plus 1, and y is less than k plus 1. Therefore, using our assumption, p sub a, p sub a plus 1, p sub a plus 2, up to p sub k are all valid, means that x and y are each either prime or the product of primes. So, x can be represented as the product of x1 up to xm, and y can be represented as the product of y sub 1 up to y sub n, and therefore k plus 1 equal 
x times y equal x sub 1 up to x sub m times y sub 1 up to y sub n. But that means that k plus 1 is a product of primes. Therefore, p sub k plus 1 is true. Using the principle of a strong induction allows us to use that x and y satisfy the property since they are less than k plus 1. We will not have been able to do that, which is the assumption of p sub k being valid. Pierre Fermat discovered a variant of the principle of mathematical induction. This variant of the principle of mathematical induction is known as the method of infinite descent. The main idea of the method of infinite descent is to reduce the problem to some infinitely decreasing sequence of positive integers. Obviously, that is a mathematical oxymoron, or as is called in mathematical lingo, a contradiction. Let us use this method of infinite descent to prove that a square root of 2 is irrational. Let us proceed with some definitions. A number q is considered rational if there is a a and b relative primes such that q is equal to a over b. A number i is considered irrational if i is not rational. That is, if i cannot be written as a over b, let us assume that the square root of 2 is rational. So we can write the square root of 2 equal a sub 1 over b sub 1, where a sub 1 and b sub 1 are positive integers, with a sub 1 greater than b sub 1, since we know that the square root of 2 is approximately 1.41. We can prove the following lemma. If the square root of 2 is equal to a over b, then a over b is equal to 2 times b minus a over a minus b. We start with the relation 1 over square root of 2 minus 1, and we multiply this by square root of 2 plus 1 on the numerator and the denominator. And we get to that this fraction is equal to square root of 2 plus 1 over 2 minus 1. And therefore, this is equal to square root of 2 plus 1 over 1. And this is equal to square root of 2 plus 1. And therefore, square root of 2 can be written as 1 over square root of 2 minus 1 minus 1. And simplifying, we get square root of 2 equal to 2 minus square root of 2 over square root of 2 minus 1. Since we assume that square root of 2 is equal to a over b, replacing this value on the right side, we get square root of 2 is equal to 2b minus a over a minus b. Now going back to our proof, a square root of 2 is equal to a sub 1 over b sub 1. And this, using the lemma, is equal to 2 times b sub 1 minus a sub 1 over a sub 1 minus b sub 1. But 0 is less than b sub 2 b sub 2 is less than b sub 1, since b sub 2 is equal to a sub 1 minus b sub 1, and this is less than b sub 1, and this is equivalent to say that a sub 1 is less than 2 times b sub 1, which is equivalent to say that 1 is less than a sub 1 over b sub 1 less than 2. And this last inequality is equivalent to 1 less than a sub 1 over b sub 1 squared less than 4. And this is true since a square root of 2 equal a sub 1 over b sub 1. And therefore, the fraction a sub 2 over b sub 2 is equal to the fraction a sub 1 over b sub 1. And also, b sub 1 
is greater than v sub 2. Obviously, we could repeat this process ad infinitum, finding this way an infinite decreasing sequence of positive integers, and that's a contradiction. So, the square root of 2 cannot be rational. Therefore, is irrational. Actually, there is one implicit assumption here, that is, that from any subset of positive integers, there is a minimal integer that belongs to that subset. This is known as the wall ordering principle. It turns out that the principle of mathematical induction is equivalent to the wall ordering principle. The principle of mathematical induction is usually presented as a consequence of the well ordering principle. So, the well ordering principle is accepted without proof as an axiom.